These men are a team, confident men of action with faith in their abilities. Arise and walk, my son. They are the dream team. We were natural healers. Michael Keaton. Our April Force gave him one text. Yes, I believe. Christopher Lloyd. What? Peter Boyle. What? And Stephen Burst. Good, good. Hold it. Star in a Showtime exclusive you won't see on HBO or Cinemax. The Dream Team. Premiering next Saturday on Showtime. Welcome to day nine of Michael Keaton Month, where I'll be viewing all the movies that Michael Keaton has appeared in. And today we kind of lighten the mood a little from yesterday's uh, clean and sober um, talk. And uh, I'm going to be reviewing The Dream Team from 1989. More specifically, it was released on the 15th of December 1989. One of the taglines was, if they knew the city was this crazy, they would have stayed in the, in the asylum. Uh, the movie is about four uh, mental patients who are in a psychiatric uh, unit. Um, Michael Keaton plays um, Billy. Christopher Lloyd plays a character called Henry. Peter Boyle plays a character called Jack. And Stephen First plays a character called Albert. Billy, he almost seems normal, you know, Michael Keaton, and he almost is almost kind of cast to type in a way, just the kind of typical Keaton role. Um, but you know, he he has, as they say, moments of violence and or history with violence and moments of uh, anger and outbursts. Henry, played by Christopher Lloyd, I love his character. He's very anal retentive, um, wants to be in charge of everything, and in fact, when we first see him, he's in a doctor's uh, doctor's robe. He's got a clipboard and he's visiting all the patients and we think that he's a doctor but he's not really. And Peter Boyle, Jack, uh, he thinks that he's Jesus, uh, he's been reincarnated as Jesus Christ. And uh, Albert, played by Stephen First, um, he doesn't speak, um, he's mute and he has I think a, a more deeper kind of problem than the other three. And um, he can only kind of communicate by recycling commentary he's heard in baseball games on the TV. Uh, now I want to find the actor's name who played uh, their doctor. Before I continue, because um, he was kind of very pivotal in the film, Dennis. Uh, ooh, how do you say that? I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't want to mispronounce it. But he played Doctor Weitzman, and I thought he was uh, brilliant in the movie. Um, you know, he just—I would have wanted him as my doctor. You know, he had that kind of like kind uh, Doctor Beard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and there's a love interest in the movie who was. Uh, kind of Billy's on and off maybe girlfriend, we're not quite sure, in the past, uh, called Riley, played by Lorraine Bracco. Uh, now the storyline of the movie, you know, you got these four guys who are in this, you know, they, they, they sit with the with Dr. Weitzman, uh, and they have a they have group, you know, every week, or I'm not sure how often, and they, that's the group that they're in, you know, Billy's just, uh, you know, just, just sick of them, sick of them all, you know, and, and Henry's really kind of, you know, he wants everything to be great, and he's always criticizing everyone else. Jack is just like, you know, I'm Jesus and I don't give a crap and Albert's just doesn't speak. So Dr. Weitzman he wants to get them out of the get them out of the, the, the you know the, the building, you know, the uh, out of the grounds and take them out to see a baseball game in New York, you know. And you know, his higher ups are like, we, we're not quite sure what you should be doing this and he's like, Come on, let's just, you know, just give him you know, a, a day out, you know. So he convinces them and they'll go out in a van to, to the city of New York. And Albert needs to go to the toilet, so, you know, Weitzman's like, well, we'll, we'll wait, but no, he really needs to go, so like, he takes him out to an alley, and he witnesses, Dr. Weitzman, he witnesses a murder, and it was a cop killing someone. Um, now, they see that he saw them, you know, committing the murder, so they knock him out, but before they can kind of finish the job, you know, they have to leave. Ambulance turns up, you know, takes Dr. Weitzman away, he's not out, he's unconscious, so now these corrupt cops, they want to kill him, you know, they want to get to the hospital he's in and make sure that he doesn't say what he saw and they need to, you know, eradicate that <laughs> loose end that is Dr. Weitzman, unfortunately. Now, the other three guys are left in the van, Albert eventually wanders back round to them and, you know, they're on their own in a van in New York City with no one to kind of guide them and they're all crazy. <laughs> and that's where, you know, it's a comedy, you know, it's there's a lot of funny lines in it, you know, each character has their own quirks. Uh, and there's just some really funny scenes and moments in this movie. I never heard about this movie uh, until one of my best friends told me about it, and I was just like, "You are kidding me!" Michael Keaton, Christopher Lloyd, and their mental patients, and they they go out for a day. I was like, "This sounds amazing." He actually got it for me once, um, I think two years ago on my birthday, and I just loved it. It was just it just sounded awesome, and it lived up to it. I really really enjoyed Dream Team, uh, and they they kind of spend like 24 hours on their own, kind of. Uh, almost unraveling the mystery of you know, these corrupt cops saving Dr. Weitzman, you know, and Billy goes back to his girlfriend and 
you know, they try and figure something out and and we see each character kind of resolve a little bit of what has got them in the the you know the institution in the first place you know they don't cure themselves they don't you know like, you know they don't all it doesn't all end rosy and they're like oh I'm, I'm sane again but they all take steps in the right direction in the movie and it's just all funny I think it's just, it's all brilliant um, in particular I love Christopher Lloyd in this movie he's just so funny he's he hates rubbish you know he has to pick up everything that's been dropped on the floor and there's a scene where he's walking out in New York and obviously there's rubbish everywhere and he's like oh He's like picking up things. Oh, and he's just like got hands, handful, hands full of rubbish, and then he notices that we just hear him go, oh, "Oh my god!" And you're like, "Oh, what is it? Has he seen a seen a body or something?" And it's just like a trash can of rubbish. And he starts helping the the rubbish man with all, all the stuff, and it's just, yeah, I love Christopher Lloyd in this movie. He's one of my favorite actors anyway. Had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of years ago, and. Uh, yeah, I'd almost say Christopher Lloyd steals it from me in this because uh, he also has a very kind of serious scene where he goes back to his family who he hasn't seen in two years and it's, yeah, it's quite sad actually. Um, so there's a little bit of drama in there but it's mainly comedy, you know. And I thought Keaton was, was great. Um, probably, you know, the same kind of comedy role he plays, I guess. Uh, and definitely not his best performance but um, I enjoyed him in it a lot. But Peter Boyle was funny as Jack, he thought he was Jesus. <laughs> There's a lot of funny situations that cropped up from, from the movie. I'm just going to have a look, quick look at the trivia, see if there's anything worthy note to uh, to leave you with uh, today. Um, ah, they they need to find some clothes um, uh, for a character. And Billy, uh, they go into this um, shop. And Billy tells the, uh, the shopkeeper that he and his group are a special combat unit with the US Marine Corps. And they're after some Libyan terrorists, which um, some think is a reference to Back to the Future, where Libyan terrorists were after Christopher Lloyd's character in that movie, Doc Brown, which is funny. Um, lead actor Michael Keaton, who also starred in Batman opposite Jack Nicholson as the Joker, appears in this film basically playing a version of the same type of uh, R.P. McMurphy, the character that Nicholson played in the 1975 film One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. Now, there are a lot of comparisons with One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, you know, taking the patients out for the day, being in an institution, and Christopher Lloyd was in that movie, you know, and he played Tabor in uh, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, so there's a, an interesting connection there, I think, um, for sure. Um, any other ones I can I can talk about, really? Um, the, the guy, the, the actor who plays Dr. Weitzman has portrayed many different kind of doctors throughout his acting career, so I guess he was cast a type in this movie also. Um, first of two movies released in consecutive years where actor Michael Keaton played a psychologically disturbed character. Uh, the next one being 1990's Pacific Heights, where he plays a psychotic tenant, which we'll talk about, not tomorrow, but the day after that on, which would be Friday. So Friday you can hear all about Pacific Heights. I, I really like that movie as well. We will tackle the Batman movies tomorrow, by the way. It's going to be a much bigger video than the normal ones. I have a special guest who's going to talk uh, with me. Uh, with you about the two Batman movies, we're going to do both of them in the same video. Um, Batman Double Bill, if you will. Um, and this is also that this movie came out in 1989 after Batman, but I was, I'm just waiting so I could get the the Batman video ready because it's quite long and, and there's a bit of editing I need to do because um, my guest joined me via Skype. Um, yeah, some movie movie posters for this film featured a, quite a long blurb that read. This morning they were playing ping pong in the hospital rec room. Now they're lost in New York and framed for murder. This was never covered in group therapy. The dream team. Four guys on a field trip to reality. <laughs> um, another movie that Christopher Lloyd starred in in 1989 was Back to the Future Part 2. Uh, yeah, the rest of the trivia is quite trivial. Uh, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and again, a lot of people have just kind of compared this movie a lot to um, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest Resort. I guess I, I see the point, you know. Um, it definitely has uh, similarities, but overall, anyway, Dream Team, I really enjoyed it. You should check it out if you want a, a fun time uh, watching a, a, an 80s movie. And uh, yeah, just for me, because it's Keaton and Christopher Lloyd, two of my favorite actors, it's kind of it's double the awesome for me uh, watching this movie. So yeah, Dream Team awesome thank you for watching and make sure you join me tomorrow and my special guest for batman and batman returns it's gonna be a long one but i think you'll enjoy it there's some clips and stuff uh, a bit more special like the beetlejuice video hope you enjoy and uh, yeah thanks for watching 
This summer, he's trying for a doubleheader as the caped crusader in Batman and as an asylum inmate on the loose in the Dream Team. Leonard Malton has the story. Ah, it's great to be young and insane. Insanity is the theme of Michael Keaton's new movie, The Dream Team. He and co-stars Peter Boyle, Christopher Lloyd, and Stephen First are four oddballs who are separated from their therapist on a field trip to Yankee Stadium. The way you describe the Dream Team makes it sound like a wild film. It makes me laugh every time I say the premises because I think it's a great premise for a movie. And they get lost, and uh, it's four uh, distinct cases, you know, and you see their personalities in uh, Manhattan. Keaton found that location shooting in New York was just as crazy as the movie's make-believe lunacy. We're walking down the street in a refrigerator box. And you don't see anybody but four, what, eight legs. No one could watch the box. You watched everybody walk around. Nobody thought twice about it. <laughs> Nobody flinched. Nobody did anything. The box got people just step out of the side and keep going. <laughs> yeah, we're all okay. You're not a doctor! You don't have the medical background! This is a pimple!